Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting at verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We're going to stop right there. Now, I want to just read uh, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also do it. All right. And now I just wanted to get that out because I believe what God is trying to share with us is there are people God has assigned in our lives, both to teach us and for us to teach. And there are principles God wants us to follow as leaders and as followers. And I want you to hear both. Number one, let's go with the children in Ephesians chapter six, starting at verse one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live on long on the earth. Now, a lot of times we don't know how important obedience is, but God wants obedience rather than sacrifice. So let's deal with the kids real quick. A lot of you think, oh, mom and pop, they don't know what's up. They're not in with the stuff. They're not up with the times. They're so far behind. We got to teach them. No, let me tell you, baby, God placed your parents in your life to teach you because there are things you don't know yet. You think you do because you have access to the Internet. But a lot of what you're learning on the Internet is perverted. You better listen to your parents. God gives a gift of insight, of discernment, a prophetic gift of protection, all of that to your parents, to guide you with, to protect you with. And if you rise up against them, you are rising up against God himself. So be very careful to give honor where honors do, because they're the ones feeding you. They're the ones clothing you. They have committed their lives to your care. For those of you who have committed parents, for those who don't, Ask God to give you the best care he can find for you. He'll work on that. But don't get disgusted if you're not getting what this word is saying. Because God is still able. And you need to turn to him and start asking for those desires of your heart. Now, before we get off the beaten path. Verse 4. And ye fathers, let me say you parents. Provoke not your children to wrath. Now, that goes for leaders as well as parents. You don't realize how saying discouraging things, mean things, uh, things, uh, insults with put downs and discouraging things can create anger in your child. 
and they can feed off of wrath. They can feed off of rage, resentment, bitterness. You don't want to do that to your child. And a lot of parents do. Ask me how I know. A lot of parents do that. And then God, in all his love, has to come in, clean up your mess, and heal your child from within. Even some of them are in their 40s and 50s, and you may be off into eternity, not even on the planet any longer. But God has to undo your damage. All right. So you are not to provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Number five. Now, this is a hard one for most people to relate to, but I'm going to bring it down to the planet. Verse five. We're reading from Ephesians six for those who may have just popped in. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. That's a hard one because a lot of us have a sore spot when we hear that word master, but let's break that baby down a little bit. According to Webster, master also associates itself with the word authority, figures of authority, bosses, mm -hmm, superintendents, principals, supervisors, managers, those who have authority over you, overseers in the body of Christ, teachers, counselors. So you have to be very careful how you respond to God-fearing counsel, to God-fearing teaching, to instruction, to correction. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because God is going to grade you on how you respond to these words that are coming to you. There's a scripture where God says, my spirit will not always strive with you. And this is a hard message for me to preach because it feels self-serving. I had no idea this was going to be part of the message until the Lord gave me these scriptures. And when you look at all these scriptures, they all deal with authoritative figures and yielding and obedience and listening and following in the right spirit. So I know God wants to deal with that. But let me share this with you. God reminded me while I was getting ready for this message. It's not going to be a preach you happy message. It's not going to be a beat you upside the head message. It's just a simple loving admonishment. And I have to share stories with you because some of you, your attention spans are so short. You can't watch anything no more than 10 minutes and you're off to the races for some reason. So let me share these stories before I lose you. Years ago, when I was at church, the Lord gave me a prophetic word of warning. A month before that, I sat and had a conversation with a young man who was hanging out with the wrong crowd. At, the, at that time, he was 17 years of age. And I remember one day when he answered the door, and the door opened, and I saw one of his buddies standing in the doorway. And it scared me. Not me being afraid for my well-being. It scared me for him. Because that was the first time in my life when I saw in a person's eyes murder. Cold-blooded murder. And I knew that man had a spirit of murder on him. He could murder somebody and sit down and eat their lunch while his foot was on their bloody body. There are people out there who are sociopaths. And if God gives a person an inclination to warn you to stay away from this one, that one, or the other one, that's not the time to get an attitude. That's the time to stop and reassess everything. 
take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, what ended up happening in this situation was I had a long talk with him and I shared with him about how hanging out with some people can be very counterproductive and how association brings on assimilation, which means you act like, talk like, walk like, quack like, waddle like the people you hang with. And if they're living in the dregs of society and doing illegal acts and doing all kind of treachery, you will end up in time doing it with them. Why? You want to be liked. Why? You want to have friends. Why? You're lonely. You got to be careful with that. So what ended up happening was I had a little chat with the young man. Later on, about a month later, we're all in church. He happens to be in the church at the time. The Lord lays a heavy burden on my heart. Check this out. I never got a word like this before, ever. But I got this word this time, and it was too strong to ignore. And the pastor allowed me to take the mic. And I said, somebody in this church is hanging out with the wrong crowd. I was getting it right there on the spot. I never expected to share that in front of the church. So I knew God was talking to more than one person. And when I got through sharing, what I said finally was what God's warning is. If you don't stop now, somebody in this church, if you don't stop, God is telling you the only warning you're going to get is one slap on the wrist. That's it. Only one. After that warning, if you continue, the next warning is not going to be a warning. It's going to be a major penalty. And you will spend a majority of your life behind bars in a major prison. That's all I had to say. I was done. One woman got up and said, I know that's for me. She took heed. The young man sat there with his arms folded with a fat attitude. Within three months, no, let me, let me take it back. Within one week, the following Friday, we didn't even get to the next weekend that Friday. We get a call. The man calls his parent to tell him that he has gotten arrested for misdemeanor possession. Mm -hmm. He'll be home that following Monday. That was the slap on the wrist. It didn't take five days and it was already happening. Three months later, we noticed we hardly saw him. We didn't know where he went. Where was he hiding? Did he have a girlfriend? Is he calling himself Shaq and what's happening? And then one day I hear a police radio and we open the door. We open the window. I look out. There's a rifle aimed at the window. I, I'm getting ready to go downstairs to find out what's going on. Ooh, ooh, because I'm nosy. See, I got good ears. Thank God. Because our door was about to get busted down. And when I opened the door and didn't know that there was going to be anybody there, there was a, a SWAT member with the ram getting ready to bust the door down. My husband blind. That was scared the mess out of him. So I'm saying, oh, what's going on? They're hollering, get on the ground, get on the ground. I said, just come on in. So as a result of my attitude and having heard in advance, thanks to God, we didn't suffer any damage and they were very kind to us. And when they let us know what they were there for, what ended up happening, the run of events fast forward, the young man is still today doing time in prison. The warning came in the nineties. When God gives you a warning, you have got to take heed. You have got to be careful not to get on the defensive, not to get bitter, not to get the attitude, not to dismiss 
or put it on the back burner for too long. Because if you put it on the back burner for too long, you might forget what the warning was. Like a friend of mine did years ago when God gave me a warning for that person not to go out with another person. And as a result, they obeyed and they were okay. But what they didn't tell me until three or four years ago was that it was something I guess they didn't want to admit to. They forgot because they put it on the back burner what I said. And what I saw was them being raped over and over and over and choked out and, and almost beaten to death. And it was crazy the way this thing was going down. And this man was choking her out because she put it on the back burner so long she forgot about it and hung out with the guys so they could just sit up and listen to some music and cruise off of some weed. And what ended up happening? And this was a cop. He raped her over and over and over and over and choked her out and raped her and choked her out. She thought he was going to kill her finally. Because she waited so long, she forgot. It was on the back burner so long, she forgot all about it. And it happened just like I saw it. Now, I'm going to share this with you. It's coming to me right now. I hadn't even planned on sharing this. Years ago, I had me a finest wine in the summertime. This brother was tall, dark, and fine. When I say fine, I mean fine. Oh, he had the most beautiful smile. He was bittersweet, dark chocolate, my favorite flavor. He looked good. Head full of beautiful hair, tall, dark, and fine. And I was unsaved. So yes, I got a lot of that taste of honey to go with it. And the honey was my flavor. Let's put it like that. The man knew what to do with everything he had. Now listen. I started noticing little in indications that he didn't have much of a heart like I thought he did. Came across real nice. But things started getting a little sour. And then I noticed my mother started giving him a nickname. And I was like, where is that coming from? She wasn't saying anything, but I was catching it. Catching what she wasn't trying to throw. She called him the peacock. Mm -hmm. And one day, that man threatened to slap me if I didn't shut up because I was saying something he didn't want to hear. I wasn't even arguing. And see, that's all I needed was that. But what my sister didn't know, because at the time, the guy and I were engaged to be married. Listen to this. There's some warnings out there that we're getting straight from God through people, and we don't want to hear it. My sister was driving down Lake Avenue. I was already getting a turquoise bridal gown. I wasn't a virgin. I wasn't going to get married no white. So I was getting a turquoise bridal gown getting, get, getting made. And he was getting ready to pick his tuxedo with his little accents that he was going to get. And sure enough, my sister sees a vision of me at a church altar. I was not going to get married in a church. At a church altar wearing white or some type of off-white. I knew it couldn't have been white. And the groom was wearing it too. As it turned out, my first husband and I got married in ivory. And I'm telling you, we got married in the church. But as soon as my sister told me that dream, I started watching Brother Man real close. And that's when he made the mistake of threatening to slap me. And I was like, done, I'm out, I'm out. And listen, I didn't get offended when she told me what she saw. I listened to that baby and I didn't put it on the back burner. I put it in my side pocket. But I listened and I escaped the horrible marriage because God sent a message through a messenger that I wouldn't have even paid much attention to because she was my sister. But I believed in gifts because we had gifts in our family. So listen. Listen to this. It may not be what you want to hear. 
It may not be what you want to do or what you don't want to do. But listen to the instruction God gives you. Know them that labor among you. Be watchful. Be aware. Don't be dummied down with your head in the ground and your backside up in the air. Because Satan will kick you so hard up your rump, you won't know your head from your behind when he gets through spinning you around. If you're not watching, if you're not listening, if you're not being careful and taking heed to the warnings God is lovingly sending your way, be very careful. Like they used to say in the streets, don't write no check, you're behind can't cover. When God is trying to warn you about something, when God is trying to teach you something, when God is trying to make a major adjustment inside of you or heal you. See, there are times when people may say something to you. Now, they may not be at a position of authority, but they may know you. They may know you. And listen to this. Listen to sound counsel no matter where you get it. Truth is truth no matter where it comes from. Listen, a friend of mine used to say all the time, no matter what the delivery package, no matter what the attitude, no matter how it's presented, get the truth out of it. And you will benefit if you're humble enough to do so. One of the things that I have found is it's difficult to listen to someone tell you the truth about yourself when you don't even want to admit that you deal with those areas. Years ago, when I was being counseled by Pastor Cushman at Pasadena Church of God, he sat me down in his office and we were talking about this, that, and the other. I was fussing and whining and complaining and doing my thing. Yeah, very emotional. And he looked at me and he said, Patty, stop that whining. Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like him <clears throat> telling me I was whining. I didn't like that at all. <clears throat> but he was telling the truth. And I had, to, I had to put on the brakes for a minute. And I whispered to the Lord, Lord, am I whining? Yeah. See, there are times people will tell you things about yourself you don't want to hear. You just don't want to hear it. I have received correction from kids. And so they were right. But do you have an ear to hear? See, just because you're grown doesn't mean that you're on the right road. Just because you're grown and you know how to wash your own body and dress yourself and write your own checks does not mean you know it all. You hear what I'm saying? There are times when people can give you a word and you are very adept at this, that, and the other. And you might actually have a funny attitude. Somebody actually thinks they're going to tell you something. You've been around the block 10 times more than they have, and they're going to tell you something. Check this out. Years ago, I'm, I'm going to make it short, I promise you. Years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who happened to be old enough to be my mother in the Lord and in the, in the natural. She was old enough, 27 years older than I was. And I said, I was watching her cook liver, and I said, would you like for me to show you a trick to cook and liver? And she looked at me with a smirk on her face. But in spite of her <laughs> reservations and her cynical humor, she stepped back, handed me the utensils and said, show me. She was willing, even though she thought it was funny that I wasn't going to teach her nothing, but she was willing. And I took the liver and I dipped it and did my thing and put it in the grease. And before two minutes was up, it was flipped over on the other side. It was cooked through and through, but it was so tender because it wasn't cooked long. 
that the liver melted in her mouth. And she had never cooked liver like that. And she said, I just learned something today. She was so excited. She said the next batch of liver she got, she cooked for her family. and They all loved it. I learned it from my mother. She wasn't a good cook, but she could cook some liver. That was one thing she could cook very well. And I'm good at seasoning. So the point is, you can always learn. And there are times when God wants to show you something. And when he wants to show you something, don't look at the package. Don't look at the delivery. You might not like FedEx. You might like UPS better, or you might rather get it from the U.S. mail. But the bottom line is don't poo-poo the package or the delivery. Don't poo-poo the messenger. <laughs> Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible where God had instructed the Israelites, don't eat the unclean thing. Don't eat anything touched by unclean things. But this prophet was being fed by God supernaturally during a famine. And guess what the messenger was that delivered his food every day? The Lord sent a raven. That's an unclean beast, a raven, to fly in and hand deliver him his meat every single day. That man was taken care of by God, direct deposit from his father which art in heaven. And he cleaned that baby and he cooked it and he ate it. He was sustained by God through an unclean vessel. Some of you in your lives, you got family members, you got friends that have gone down the toilet. They live a trashy life. And God is saying, I'm going to use them to bless you. There was a family. The woman had had the kids set the table. They prayed over the meal that they didn't have. Cabinets were empty. Bellies were empty. They were hungry. And a knock comes on the door. And it was this man loaded with bags of groceries. He was the town drunk. And he said, God told me to bring this to your family. So you notice the pastor didn't hear it. The minister of music didn't get the memo. The church members didn't get the memo. But the town drunk, he heard from God. And he obeyed. And the family was sustained. Don't curse the messenger. Be very careful how you receive from the Lord. Be very careful how you look at what you're getting from God and who it's coming from. Be very careful about that. You can always say, Lord, is this really from you? That's fine. But don't look a gift horse in the mouth and say, mm. I know that ain't for me. Watch that attitude. That might be the only blessing that God has, has provided you with for that moment. That might be the only vessel that can bring it to you that is even obeying God, that even has an ear to hear. Don't poo-poo. God can use all kind of crazy, witty ways to bless you. Be very careful. His timing may not be your timing. His process might not be your choice. Hmm. His messenger may not be your pick. Think about that. And the ones you want to see your blessings come from. God may say, Ixnay on at they, no way, baby cakes. And you may not like that. But as long as you obey, God will bless you with the desires of your heart in his time, his way, by any means he chooses. And I'm done. All I ask is when you get a blessing, thank him. If it doesn't come through the right channel that you would like it to come through, thank him anyway. If you get words of correction you don't like, 
thank him and take it back to him. Double check with him. Lord, is this really from you? Try the spirit. See if they be of God. But don't ignore what you don't want to hear just because you don't want to hear it. Don't ignore it because it goes against your grain and your flesh is crying out for A, B, and C. And the Lord is saying, ixnay, ixnay, ixnay. No. Be obedient, willing, and remember. <laughs> Obedience is better than sacrifice. God bless you. God keep you. God causes faith to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. And for those of you who don't know the Lord, please give him, say that prayer to the Lord. Lord, I don't know you. I need something more in my life. There's gotta be more to life, to, to life than this. Uh, I wanna get to know your son, Jesus Christ. Pray to the Father in the name of the Son. In Jesus' name, I accept your, your Son as my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please forgive me. Clean my slate. Give me a new start. And then see where God leads from there. God bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>